Before we get started, I need to set some rules of engagement. 1. We're playing version 1.0.4D on the PC, since this is the version most people are familiar with. Future updates will affect parts of this video. Corrections due to future game updates will be in the pinned comment below. 2. We're not flying with Prez. <laughs> there are no late game two-seaters, and no indication which planes are two-seaters. Besides, all of Prez's lines would just reverse the counter anyway. 3. Like CinemaSins, material outside of the missions does not count. Even if something is explained in the lore files, art book, or other material, if it's not in the gameplay itself, then it doesn't exist in this video. On that note, we're playing on normal difficulty. Locking story content behind a higher difficulty is stupid in any game. And four, this is just the base game. Frontline 59 will have a separate video. All set? Let's go. Reading. What kind of question is that? You guys stole a Federation ship. And here we go. Blech. I can deal with it, having played Classic Ace Combat, but the option should still be there, especially for players new to this genre. Why is everyone acting surprised by the explosion? They said there was an airship's years worth of cordium in there, and that it was unstable. Looks like some sort of cordium containment chamber. Reading says it's unstable. Copy, Ronan. How much is present? Enough to keep an airship power for the uh, corporate sensors. We're about to break off and go west anyway. No one's Cascadia. Don't you have it? So war against the Federation. So the war in Cascadia. Interesting. How did you not know? The briefing screen already showed it in progress. I know some of us who were born out here in the periphery can't even imagine it, but I'm sure this hits closer to home for some of you. This is the first of many, many instances of foreshadowing Dip and Comic's real identities. First, as I said. Second, none of them are committing treason. They're mercenaries, not Federation. You're not equipped to do border patrol? The first of many references to Oceania. We just had a whole briefing about the Civil War. Kabik even asked Galaxy. Do they have the memory of goldfish? Hello, Sicario. I'm Captain Griffiths, otherwise known as Stardust. <laughs> Stardust? That's not a pilot's call sign, that's a stripper name. I know it's probably a reference to David Bowie, but Griffiths wishes he was as cool as Ziggy. Pressed for time, so listen up. Pressed for time, says the stripper, before he gives us a long-winded speech. Need I remind him that we're already here? He doesn't need to sell it anymore. Take care not to damage the facilities too much during the attack. This line serves no purpose. The base facilities aren't targetable like other neutral targets will be in later missions. Wait, day three of the current contract? It's been two days since the last mission? What happened to- You'll be heading back out within the hour. Gee, I wonder where Dip and Comic come from. This is Crosstalk Squadron, commencing intercept. An air squadron called Crosstalk? Either their superiors have a great sense of humor, or their radios really need some repairs. You think I can ask our riflemen to reserve a nice hangar space for us? There was no such thing as nice this far north. You should know that. Never flew these skies like you did. Gee! I wonder where Dip and Comic come from. Uh, one last thing, everyone. We're going by our tack names for the duration of this contract. 
I'm pretty sure my name is public domain in regards to Sicario. However, we've gone to great lengths to keep yours hidden. If you break it, it's on your ass. You know how bounty hunters are if they have a name. But every other aspect of your past lives that can identify you, please feel free to share on the radio. Hitman team, you will be deployed to an agricultural area to the south. One of the Independence Force's surviving battalions has been driven there by a Federation offensive. Launch and lift the siege. If that battalion falls, our forces won't have enough manpower or command to organize again. Don't worry, we'll liberate Silva. I mean, Salvini. Foreshadowing. Oh, great. Dust Mother is this game's Dance with the Angels, isn't it? The Cascadian Independence Force is incapable of taking a radio away from a drunkard. Says a soldier who would have literally died if we didn't help. Hard copy. Issuing fear of the word. Mercenary forces are now in play by the rebels. Did... Did you not figure that out from the last two missions? Skadia. If Monarch keeps racking up kills like that, we're gonna need a bigger offshore account. Tax evasion. We're home. Been about a decade, but we're back. Anyone know how many people are on this frequency? Especially any bounty hunters? By land, by air, and by sea, we are extracting from Presidia. By sea? How are you doing that with the Federation blockade? <sighs> oh, okay. That Federation soldier would be great at cinema sense. Actual legitimate war crimes. That Federation soldier would also be great at cinema sense. The Federation peacekeepers specifically assigned to Cascadia are days away from entering the country? A Federation naval battle group was able to set up a blockade quicker than the specifically assigned to Cascadia peacekeeping squadron could arrive in Cascadia. Bounty hunters, write that down. What did you expect? That's war. RTB before reinforcements respond en masse. Once the Federation knows what we're doing, they're going to be retaliating hard. Foreshadowing? Alright, Ramblers, let's get rambling. <laughs> I love that line a lot. Take one off for that. Apodox facility chief would be great at cinema sense. Well, this is the first ace combat or ace combat like to have heat damage. That's one hell of a feature. Oh great, we're starting early. Exposition. Yeah, he's slippery. 
What I appreciate about the option to engage Crimson is that they react way before you damage or shoot down any of them. By this point, most players will have crossed the return line, so it makes sense that they'd have lines recognizing you already. Very well done. I don't know if this was intentional, but my dogfight against this VX-23 kept getting closer and closer to the return line, like they were leading me to exit the area and not shoot them down. I had to compensate by turning around and opening my ass to more missile fire. Whether that's programmed or not, I'll give the game credit. Hey, at least Galaxy's still doing his job. Even when I'm a mercenary, I still end up fishing. There's no one there except the Briefer, Monarch, and Comic, but I'm still sitting Comic for that identity reveal. There are a lot of subtitle errors in Project Wingman, to a degree that it's actively detrimental to accessibility. I'm not sending most of them since a lot of it is just grammar, but when the line is completely different, I can't let it slide. Well, there's an understatement. Jeez, she's right, but that seems a little harsh. Galaxy's done a fine job so far. Foreshadowing for Frontline 59. Believe that? Galaxy got into a nautical mood. Ah, I see these missiles went to the Breaking Arrow School of Cruise Missile AI. It's imperative that no civilians are harmed in this operation, so engage carefully. Careful's my last name, and safety's my mom. What? Give me a team. We're arriving in your AO. Tagging civilian and Federation air traffic now. That's a lot of air traffic for a war zone galaxy. Watch your fire when taking down these transports. If any bystanders go down, that's on us and the Independence Force. Given that our computers don't lock onto allies, why can't Galaxy mark civilians as allies so we don't lock onto them? Civilian airliners don't have IFF transponders. At least not military compatible ones. The city of Prospero was named after Paul Prospero, a moderator in the Project Wingman Discord server. Project Wingman's developers apparently had no idea about the Warhammer 40k planet or its burning of Prospero. Still, the name doesn't bode well for the city. That guy sounds like the most fake air marshal ever. Yeah, I was expecting that. Hitman team, heads up. We have another AWACS in the area. I've got the head for one AWACS up here. It took Diplomat eight seconds to come up with a joke. Damn it, Trip, why'd you join the Federation? I don't feel happy about adding an AV tuber to my kill log. Hey, at least Dip knows who's wearing the pants in the squadron.
Oh, so it turns out everyone knows who Comic and Dip are. Trust me, bounty hunters will not use this information. You've made your fortunes and lost them so many times these last few years. So what else is there, huh? Another fortune, probably. I get the point he's making, but it's like asking a pirate why bother pirating. Local air defense commander was sleeping at 10 p.m. Galaxy would be great at CinemaSins. Not at that distance, you can't. <laughs> I appreciate that they waited until I was out and started peppering me with guns. That's very smart AI. Enemy the mission completed before I shot down the last priority unit. The chatter. Kaiser channeling his inner thunderhead. I appreciate the mission script actually showing the explosions Ronan caused. Kaiser casually ignoring Independence HQ's request. Where did all the other AWACs go? Were they shot down? If so, why were they so close to the furball? If there's more fighters inbound, then yes, there are more reinforcements. This is not a battle royale. Well, that worked out, didn't it? That's a stupid question to ask a mercenary. Kids, do not dogfight aircraft with a battleship. The eminent domain is nowhere on this map. Call signs aren't self-assigned. Besides, it's just a monarch butterfly. Uh, sorry, hold on. Could you say that again? One more time? Hmm, yes, the floor here is made of floor. That ally's line is in red. Cascadia wanted independence, it's the Federation that chose to Subtitle error. Bold of Crimson 1 to say that when he's down to only two wingmen. Why are there three Stardusts? Is Stardust a squadron of strippers? 
But Griffith said, I'm Captain Griffiths, otherwise known as Stardust. That's Stardust 1, or the leader of a squadron. Good to see Master Goose with us. I'm glad for that continuity. Galaxy does not obey proper safety protocols. Have you ever had champagne spilled on a computer? Trust me, no one is rich enough to deal with that. We couldn't get an exact count of how many fighters you downed today, but we'll just round up and call it fair. I'm looking right now at the exact count, as well as a definitely not rounded up final payout. Hitman team, an interesting hit came up on available taskings, and I don't think anyone else from Sicario's pilots or the other Merc teams could take this on, so listen up. Whoa, 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 why does Cascadia have captured territory of Magadan? Is anyone going to address that? No? Several fishermen within the last week have reported intense bursts of light emanating from the Harkema Industrial Park off the coast. So you're saying this will affect the trout population? Ronin will be clearing some of the radar buoys, giving you a way into the airspace undetected. When you make it through, be prepared for anything. We have no idea what else might be being worked on out there. Foreshadowing? Dip is blind. Oh hey, it's been a little while since we got personal details about Dip and Comic. Bounty Hunters, write that down. In real life, we don't exactly know the unit cost of a MiG-29, but it's estimated to be at least 10 million US dollars. So now I'm wondering how Comic's FC-15 is even flying, if she didn't pay millions for it. Hired security guy would be great at CinemaSense. Foreshadowing. Federation Soldier would be great at CinemaSense. Foreshadowing. Yeah, destroying things that might harm our clients. I would have appreciated this advice six missions ago. Also, they're not lasers, they're railguns. I guess we're just openly talking about our criminal histories on the radio? Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. There you go, that's how you know there's actual scientists working here. Um, there are no other targets being highlighted. How would Galaxy know this thing is two generations away? Roll credits. Well, I shot her down. Now what's with this crate? Why is it a priority target, and why do I need to destroy it to finish the mission? Damn it. Set clone. This is for 
Outpost. I'm out of here. Is it in Gatapod? They have a scene and they have a visual on the shoot. Wait, where are you going? She's French. She has to retreat. It's in her DNA. Your air support up and down the front has been integral in demoralizing and outright destroying- Whoa, now Cascadia has more territory in Magadan? Why are we not addressing this? Who let mercenaries go loose without any commander? Sure, but remind me, who owns Monarch? Did Project Wigman just rickroll us? Foreshadowing? Subtitle error. Rhodesian Air Force reference. Kind of obscure for most people, but hey, we'll take it. Foreshadowing. Dip would be great at CinemaSins. I wonder why that message was transmitted. Wait, that Federation Defender is on our side? Ah yes, those damn reinforcements. I'm glad Kaiser keeps it mysterious when the reason is actually that the emblem is literally just a monarch butterfly. Hello? Anyone? Why is the mission still- oh, there we go. Entire front lines have either fallen or been abandoned by Federation troops in Cascadia. Still no recognition of what's happening in Magadan. With many falling back to Presidia through here. Subtitle error? Due to all the smoke, expect ground level visibility to be low. The terrain is dangerously deceptive. Subtitle error? Foreshadowing? Also, technically roll credits since this universe is called World on Fire. Not if they don't want to commit war crimes. Dip and comic disengage, but the game allows us to commit perfidy if we want. Bounty hunters, you listening? Federation forces have folded in the region. The majority of those that escaped today have been rallying back at their in-country headquarters. Prospero. Ah, there's that name again. Still, the wildfires were in this mission, so the next mission probably won't see too much burning of Prospero. Prospero, the economic heart of this side of the world. Even the cities of Moira and Byzantium in the Federation are challenged by it. This was a city whose main purpose was to breed trade. Not only is the Megadan occupation over with, but the Federation has now counter-invaded a little bit past the Bering Strait, 
and still no one is talking about it. Even if the hangars are underground, why haven't they been shelling the runways themselves? Foreshadowing. Seriously, how much more transparent can you get than saying you don't need to worry about landing? Oh yeah, that'll protect you. Foreshadowing. Subtitle error. Glad to see at least one Federation officer with a sense of morals. Those cruise missiles literally just pop right in. Galaxy doesn't elaborate. He saw the thermal signatures, but he's leaving us in the dark. Ah, these missiles also went to the Breaking Arrow School of Cruise Missile AI. Breaking the comedy for a moment, I remember COD 4's Shock and Awe mission and how people reacted to a video game actually showing terrorists detonating a nuclear weapon. I remembered the feeling in my stomach a year before that when I played Ace Combat Zero, knowing what was coming up and how I felt when it happened. Game engines are finally at the point where these events don't have to be in cutscenes or in the distance, and Project Wingman makes full use of that. Of course the frame rate suffers, but that almost adds to it. I seriously tried my hardest to shoot down as many missiles as I could, both in my first playthrough and in the footage you're watching, and I couldn't do it. No one can, not on the first playthrough with normal aircraft. To paraphrase a comment from Side Zio on Jose Pavli's channel, the game looks you in the eyes and says, What? You're the hero, aren't you? Save them. And you try, and you get points for trying, but you can't. You have to watch the Federation vaporize your allies and destroy the world while you listen to horror music. This is storytelling through gameplay, and it's beautifully done. And no one assumed something was up? No one raised alarms? The calamity caused the deaths of billions of people, and they're treating the loss of a monitoring station like jaywalking. The Federation chose to perform this kind of attack in an area with a volcano? Are you absolutely kidding me? That is not the butterfly effect. The butterfly effect describes small events with non-linear impacts on complex systems. The name coming from the example of a butterfly flapping its wings in one place in time, causing a change in a tornado in another place in time. A chain reaction of cordium reacting upon cordium is a domino effect, not a butterfly effect. We were in the After Calamity era. Now we are in the Orange era. Galaxy should know, given that he's got the sensors. This country's gone insane. Well, now that's just a blatant Ace Combat Zero reference. What the hell are we doing heading back to base? Because we're mercenaries, not heartless. That's one hell of a funny line, given that most mercenaries are heartless. Galaxy is apparently the fastest AWACS in the West. Yeah, 
Another obvious Ace Combat Zero reference. First off, foreshadowing. Second, what does that make Frost then? She was only here to collect a paycheck. Contradicting her earlier statement. Master Goose, I already shot you down. You should not be talking. Let's say we had to pay for our missiles and guns and repairs. We are definitely not getting paid enough to live a comfortable life after just a single mission. Also, Frost is contradicting herself again. Why would any mercenary continue working as a mercenary if they just needed one mission to retire? I get that she's foreshadowing the identity reveal, but she's making zero sense. You did! You have been revealing every single sordid detail about both your lives over the mercenary radio channels for 15 damn missions! Also, I really don't like that the subtitle speaker ID changes to show Dip's real name for just these two lines. Besides, I've spent 15 missions with Diplomat, not Peter Kennedy. See, this is my point. I know who Kaiser is, but I don't know who Franken is. The sudden shift into using real names is really confusing. Again, this is just disorienting. Besides, Kaiser was even the one who said we're strictly using tack names here, so now he's going against himself. Whose fault is that, you idiot? Oh look, now his subtitle speaker ID is Stardust 1 instead of Stardust. Galaxy, you are the hero of this video. Listen to the lady. He's got rank on you. If you remember who she is. This line makes absolutely no sense without background lore information. Besides, I don't think Comic's former rank makes much of a difference as a mercenary. Left Cascadia the first time, right? You don't know a lick about us. That is one hell of a claim when you just got exposed. Do you notice how none of the speakers are identified? Trying to keep track of the different male voices is still difficult for me, and I'm not even deaf or hard of hearing. This cutscene may be the worst instance of lack of accessibility in this entire genre, let alone the game. Look outside. You think there's a Cascadia left? Perfectly timed lightning cliche. It looks worse than it is. Promise. Oh, in addition to being a stripper, Stardust is also a scientist. Me and my soldiers. My soldiers and I. Bad time. The Earth itself opened up to fight you. Technically, that was the Federation. The Earth kinda had no say in the matter. Jesus Christ. Kaiser has absolutely zero spine, and will fold like a bad poker hand the instant he's shown enough zeros in the dollar sign. Well, I guess you'll just be the low-life mercenary that turned away when history needed him most. <laughs> okay, the stripper knows exactly how to tempt Kaiser. Wow, that is definitely a line I wrote. Damn it, listen to yourself, woman! Even if me and Monarch- Monarch and I. Still a bad time? Is- is that what I think it is? 
Oh, shit. Great, a MacGuffin. Someone call Tarantino, I think he's missing a briefcase. Galaxy. Oh, now he's calling him Galaxy. The mixture of names in this mission and cutscene has my head spinning. Rose Dower is about to be swallowed. And yet we're sitting here in one of the most boring cutscenes ever. There's a highway that never got the funds it needed out by the Daner Valleys. This is a certified Yellow Squadron moment. END? Why is the contract different? So that's it, huh? Business as usual? They fly out a letter and we're going back out. Yeah, that's how mercenaries work. You should know this. Where did we get an airship and cruise missiles? Isn't it still just RTB? However, rest assured, it's not going to get any worse. Silly briefing software, those are ships, not aircraft. Speaking of which, haven't we made enough money to register a license for this software by now? We're returning to Prospero. With as big as it is, even while damaged, it'll still serve as the best operating base for the final operations. With residual effects subsiding, now is the time to pick up where we left off. This is a viable place to set up shop? What kind of strip clubs does Stardust work at? Look, the volcano is even active now! Ugh, I hate that line so much. At least accuse me of something I could have actually done. I have to take back the credit I gave earlier for heat damage, seeing as how I'm flying on boiling lava from an active volcano and taking no damage. Comic would be great at CinemaSense. Also, when did Crimson suddenly get on our frequency? Comic immediately reacted as if we could hear them all along, but that's definitely not true. <laughs> subtitle error. And subtitle error. I didn't realize being a mercenary was a crime now. Character tells another character to stop raising the sin count with their nonsense chat cliché. The worst part is that it works and Crimson 1 stops talking. How would Galaxy know that? I will knock off one sin here since it's really fitting that Crimson One died where the Federation committed moral suicide. This is genuinely a really poetic ending to his character. <laughs> Comic would still be great at cinema sense. Galaxy ignores him and allows us to keep attacking Federation ships even while Woodward tries to offer their surrender. No wonder they don't respond to him, we're still attacking them. Jesus, 
Oceania. And 15 years ago. Oh hey, a Federation ship also defected to us. Love these subtitle errors. The briefing says this is a time-sensitive operation, which is not true because you could take as much time as you want. The operation to take back Presidia will be separated into four cardinal parts. Land, air, sea, and endgame. Actually, the briefing screen shows city, air, naval, and port. It is by your attacks that the offensive will conduct itself. Choose which element of the battle you want to take on and in what order. These lines imply that there's an Ace Combat 6-like operation mechanic going on here, but there isn't. We do not get to choose which elements we tackle or in what order. Sidia is its heart. The flag that flies over it at the end will decide all of our fates. Subtitle error? Casual Ehrenberg reference. Again, illusion of choice. Oh, how the tables have turned. Subtitle error. Major subtitle error. Holy shit, I'm not listening to all that skip. Does Dip not know what a ceasefire is? Oh, uh, no one here knows what a ceasefire is. Subtitle error. Honestly, I really enjoy this as the ending to the game. After Cascadia hired bloodthirsty mercenaries and the Federation committed such atrocities, both sides suddenly having to stop is really poetic. It's a really fitting way to end. Me? No. I have to finish it. Fine. You want me to do this? You ask for it. First off, Crimson One survived a plane crash in Prospero next to an active volcano. 
Second, Crimson One is absolutely aware that there's a ceasefire in effect, yet he chose to attack all forces indiscriminately with a weapon of mass destruction. I would love to know how I, solely, am responsible for this. Third, please tell me, how did Crimson One get access to the Project Wingman? Last we heard of it, it was at Sawaiki and sent to the Federation Corps months ago, while Crimson One Need I remind you, crashed next to an active volcano in Prospero only three weeks ago. Fourth, please tell me who thought giving Crimson One access to the Project Wingman was a smart idea. Yes, of course I'll reverse the counter for Jose Pavli's phenomenal music, but only once. We've got a lot of work to do for this mission. Subtitle error. That's a metal line, but given that we're in a plane, I think it would take a lot less than 1,000 days for someone to find the wreckage. Probably not, but you chose to. Blaming anyone but yourself for your own actions. Some of you might ask why I'm being so harsh on Crimson One here. After all, there are plenty of psychotic villains who lose their minds in fiction. The thing is, Crimson One loses his mind off screen, accuses us of things we didn't do, and has zero redeeming qualities. I've seen people say that he's a foil to Monarch, but he's not. Pixie is a foil to Cypher. Crimson One is just an idiot with a gun. I guess it makes sense, he's from America. <laughs> this mission should not exist. Presidia and a ceasefire was the perfect ending to a story about mercenaries. But we needed an epic final boss, so... We got this. Oh yeah, because this fight is so equal. You have quadrupled the health and weapons that I have, but sure, this is definitely a fair fight. Also, you had an entire squadron, and not only did I shoot you down, but I shot down all of you together. I shot down five of them over the Bering Strait, and one of them at the Apodoc Fracture. What does that make me then? DJ said that he fought for peace because he was naive and didn't know how bad war was. Crimson One doesn't have that excuse. The Federation could have let Cascadia be, but they chose to escalate this into war. I didn't color the world orange. In fact, we avoided harming civilians whenever possible. Subtitle error. Also, Crimson One must think Monarch is in high school if he thinks we can fight another war in 50 years. Ugh. This is probably the most blatant example of Crimson One being a complete failure of a pixie clone. Even Frost knew what was up. Hitman was Cascadian, and this was personal. How is it that Frost knew about our identities and backgrounds, but Crimson One doesn't? Pixie's point was that killing people over artificial lines was a waste, while Crimson One is mad that we get paid better? You can make Ace Combat Zero references all day long, but if you do, at least make it make sense. The 
the end of that line takes a hard left turn. It just makes no sense. I don't remember shoving him into the Project Wingman's cockpit. So why did you blow it up? I would love to know how he knows about the Pulp Fiction briefcase when we barely even know about it. It doesn't matter who shoots down who, which is why this fight is literally pointless. I don't even need to read any outside material. Anyone can guess what will happen. Cascadia and the mercenaries will probably commit brutal atrocities and slaughter every Federation soldier in revenge, while the Federation will run like hell and beg for mercy, both on the front line and the world stage, because everyone will think the Federation did exactly what they did at Prospero. It doesn't matter who dies here. Crimson One just permanently killed the Federation. Hell no, of course they didn't. You realize you were their commander, not us, right? Oh yeah, because it's all sunshine and rainbows down there. a health bar cliche. Trust me, I won't. I liked Olivieri from Joint Assault more than you. And that's saying something because I hate Olivieri and the Joint Assault. I guess Crimson One finally fulfilled his dream. He became an orange. Technically, Cascadia isn't in ruins, just Prospero and Presidia and a couple other hotspots. Wait, that... that's it? That's all there is? We're forced into a fight that has the same outcome whether we live or die, and the game just ends? No explanation, no details about what happened. I don't know why so many indie games have these sudden endings, but I'm not letting it slide. Before we get to the final sentence, I do want to clear this up after ripping Kings to shreds. I love Project Wingman as a whole. It's really fun to play, it's a great love letter to the best of Ace Combat in both story and mission design, and I cannot sing the praises of composer Jose Pavli enough. I backed the game on Kickstarter and helped test it, and I have 100% achievements on Steam, and I don't regret any of that. But Crimson won. That ending. You don't need to hear it from me. Galaxy's voice actor thought the ending was abrupt, and he was the reason why there's any dialogue in the credits on Mercenary Difficulty to begin with. As I said at the beginning, no credit is given for difficulty-specific story or outside lore materials, so this is it. Again, I still love Project Wingman as a complete package, I just hate the ending. I'm glad that the game has sold over half a million in copies on Steam and has been released on consoles, and I hope it continues to prosper and inspires more games in this genre.
Careful's my last name and Safety's my mom. The defense system is calibrated for mass aerial strikes, but a lone aircraft flying relatively level with the mountains should be able to slip through and take them out. A few small fighters flying unpredictable high-speed courses should be able to get within range. You've made your fortunes and lost them so many times these last few years. So what else is there, huh? Money! Very well then. Time to throw in my next axe. Hey, 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 come back here. I'm not through with you yet. Uh-uh. The chosen one! It's just good business. There I am, Gary! There I am! Look, Gary, there I am again! Look! That's the neat thing. You don't. <laughs> 